We are studying the book of Matthew, our, our main curriculum for this year, 2016, as we have this campaign, Let Your Kingdom Come. Now, we are still in the Sermon of the Mountain, but I decided to move from chapter 5, the last part, to chapter 6. As I promised you before, we're going to study the Beatitudes, and then I was planning to have a series on the parables. But after praying and after meditating in God's word, I give sense to God for leading me from today to teach you an, another new series that is called the Lord's Prayer. I didn't plan it this, this year because I was assuming that we, we Christians, we pray. I was assuming that we Christians, we are good, we know how to pray. But as I was studying and also meditating on the Sermon on the Mountain, I found out something that I missed at the beginning of the year. And that was that God wants us to pray and to pray according to His will, not as we think that we pray or we should pray. And this is important to understand why in the Sermon of the Mountain, in the Sermon of the Mount, we have the teaching of the Lord's Prayer. So it's not just randomly there. It's not just a casualty that it, Matthew, the evangelist, added into the narrative of the Sermon of the Mount, the Lord's Prayer. Even the evangelist Luke, he will put it in his chapter 11. And part of this Sermon of the Mount preaching is around the verses of the book of Luke. But as many theologians says, probably the Sermon on the Mount is a collection of sermons of Jesus when he was preaching around the synagogues. Remember that Jesus was famous now for preaching the, and teaching and healing around the synagogues. But this Sermon of the Mountain was first to his disciples and then later to the rest of the followers of Christ or the people who were getting in the synagogues. So the apostles received the, this sermon first and they also continue to repeat these teachings in their synagogues. Probably Jesus spent three years teaching the same thing, preaching the same thing, this very Sermon on the Mountain in all the synagogues. And that's why Matthew could not just leave this Sermon of the Mount without the teaching of the Lord's Prayer. When I was thinking about that, I was thinking how full I was to not planning the beginning of this year the teaching of the Lord's Prayer. I was thinking that, well, we are all adults in life CEM. We are already grown Christians. We know already the Lord's Prayer. This is for kids' service. But how childish we are every day, taking for granted many sins by faith, by grace, and not putting in practice and not trusting and obey God's word. The Sermon on the Mountain is a model and a design for Christian life. And the, the Lord's Prayer is the model and design for all Christians and churches to pray. We're going to have a six-week series of the Lord's Prayer, starting the next week with the very beginning of this Lord's Prayer, Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. But today I just want to give you the purpose of prayer. And I touched this sermon, Purpose Driving Prayer. I don't know how many of you have heard about this uh, title, Purpose Driving Prayer, but probably you have heard about Purpose Driving Life, Purpose Driving Church, Purpose driving discipleship or something like that, or leadership. 
But many, many, many probably didn't hear about purpose driving prayer. It's not a book, it's just a title of a sermon. And yeah, in some way, I want to relate this teaching to the purpose driving life that is a famous book of the pastor Rick Warren. But before that, just let me quote what one person who was touched by the book Purpose Driving Life said about his own personal experience. His name is Michael Fields, and he, as you probably know already, he was one of the golden medalists in swimming this last Rio Olympic Games. He became very famous after he, I, get, he, I think he got like five gold medals, right? Five or six gold medals this last Olympi Olympics. And he said, you can't put a limit on anything. The more you dream, the farther you get. Now, this is what a swimming golden medalist said for his own personal life. And he is now an example, a, a, a mother for many Jews, many young American students who wants to dream for future, who wants to have greater plans for their life, and who want to put some meaning in their life. But Michael Fields, he was not always a good example. He was not always a person who can be a representative for his nation. And the news says that he was in trouble. No once, no twice, many times in his life. And one report, he said, early this morning, I was arrested and charged with DUI, excessive spend, spending and crossing double line lines. I understand that severity of my actions and take full responsibility. I know these words may not mean much right now, but I'm deeply sorry to everyone I have let down. In other words, Michael, he was in trouble. He was not doing the right thing, and he was not giving a good example for those who want to imitate him. He had struggles in his life. He had fightings in his life, in his personal life. And he couldn't overcome these struggles until he met God. The Bible said that we all Christians are struggling. It's called it the spiritual warfare. And the book of Ephesians says in verse 12, chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh or blood, but against the ruler, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now the New King James Version says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and of the darkness of this age, against a spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So, struggling or wrestling in our life is a spiritual warfare. And every Christian must struggle and wrestle against the flesh against this material life that we have, the life of flesh. Because the flesh is opposite to the spirit. They are not in harmony. They are against to each other. And the Apostle Paul gave us a long teaching about how to, we struggle with the, our flesh and how the flesh is opposite, opposite to the spirit. Michael Field, he read the book of Pastor Rick Warren, Driving, Purpose Driving Life, What on Earth I'm Here For. And he changed his life. He repents for, for his sin, and he starts to fight for his struggles. And even, it doesn't say it in his testimony, I'm sure that Phil, uh, Michael Fields, he 
pray a lot. He prayed a lot. He started to pray. And he training himself to pray as he training himself for the medal Olympics that he got. He, he, he won in every competition. His pastor, Pastor Rick Warren, he also said, I will keep praying for you, Michael. I will keep praying for you. And I'm sure that he does. And that's what we pastors should do for all our members. Because Pastor Warren, he knew about the struggles of Michael. Michael probably shared his struggle after reading his book and then he had counseling with Pastor Warren. And he dramatically changed his life from a shameful life to an example life, exemplary life. I'm sure that we Warren was encouraging him with his sermons, with his messages about prayer. Because he probably said, hey, you have a problem and you have to fight with this problem. And you cannot fight with this problem if you don't pray. So let me teach you about prayer. And I'm quoting Pastor Rick Warren, what he said about prayer. And he said probably to Michael, prayer isn't convincing God to do our will, but aligning ourselves with his will, which, re which requires overcoming evil with good. Probably he said to Michael, prayer change, your, pr prayer change you first before changing your situation or others. God wants to work in you. And probably he said to him, or he listened from Pastor Warren, don't Pray for an easier life. Ask for more strength. God's power is in your life is determined by whether you pray in just special times or all the times. Warren will continue to say, Pride prevents pr prayer as long as we believe that the lie that the, the lie that we are in control of everything, we fail to ask for God's help. And he continued probably saying that if you only pray when you feel like it, Satan will make sure you never feel like it. And the most dangerous prayer you can pray is just two words. Use me. These are words from Pastor Rick Warren. I'm sure that Michael Fields, he heard these words. And he was thinking about his struggle. And he was thinking about his responsibility to be the representative of his nations, to win a prize for the glory of his nation and for the generations who wants to follow him as a tutor, as a mentor, who wants to become disciples of him as he became also disciple of Jesus Christ. This is what is the purpose of prayer. We are here to learn the purpose of prayer because prayer is priority in the kingdom of God. Prayer is priority in let the kingdom of God come and let his will be fulfilled in our life as it is in heaven. Without prayer, the kingdom of come will never come. <laughs> yes. Without prayer, the kingdom of God will not be known among the nations. Without prayer, we cannot overcome the enemies of the kingdom of God. Because yes, there's an enemy of the kingdom of God. He's the king of the kingdom of evil. And he is in war with God. And he's in war with all who follow God. So if you are a following of Christ, if you are a follower of God, you are in war with the devil. And that's why Matthew, he teaches now the most important part of the Sermon of the Mountain after the Beatitudes, that is the Lord's Prayer. Because in Christianity, there are two sins that you have to deal well as you have your right hand and your left hand. You have to 
have the word of God at hand and your prayers at the other hand. You have to hold them both. You have to be well trained in dealing with the word of God and well trained in talking to God and dealing with the devil with prayer. Yes, we need to hold both. And I'm sorry if I didn't plan this at the beginning of the year, but now I repent to God and say, God, I'm going to teach the Lord's Prayer as you commanded. So prepare for a series of six weeks that we have again. Probably many of those who are not here today, they're going to miss why we are changing now the curriculum in CM. But you have the opportunity to explain to them as we continue this series the next week. S.D. Gordon, a pastor and evangelist, he said in his book, Quiet Talks on Prayer. The great people of the earth today are the people who pray. I do not mean those who talk about prayer, nor those who say they believe in prayer, nor yet those who can explain about prayer, but I must be taken from something else. This something else is important, very important, and pressing than prayer. They are people that put prayer first and group the other items in life, schedule around and after prayer. The great people on the earth today and all the times are the people and were the people who pray. And the future greatest people on planet Earth will be the people who pray. And I'm sure that if we are struggling with something here in this ministry, if I am struggling with something in my ministry now, it's because of lack of prayer. And I'm not saying that I never pray. I don't say I'm praying, and that's why we are failing now. now. But I, what I'm saying is that we are not praying according to God's will as a ministry. Now, you have to be careful that the Lord's Prayer it's not an individual prayer. If you quote it and you read again the Lord's Prayer word by word, you will find out the pronoun of the Lord's Prayer is not singular. It's plural. It started with our Father in Heaven and finished with our transgression. It's about us. It's about the Church of Christ. It's about the discipleship. It's about the leadership of Christianity in the world. But its leader is, leadership is not on the shoulders of one person, even though it was on the shoulders of Christ. It's now on the shoulders of the Church. And the Church is a body. It's the body of Christ. And have many members. Many members. So the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer that you pray alone. It's a prayer that you pray with your church. It's a prayer that you pray with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, we need to be people of prayer. We need to pray to God together. And probably the problem that we are facing right now, the challenges that we are facing right now, is because we don't pray as a church. You are good prayers that you pray for yourself, you pray for your, your personal things, but you, do you pray for the church together? Do you pray as a church together? Do you know what are the prayers requests, the prayer titles that you can pray for your church, for CEM? I mean, do you know what are the CEM prayer requests? Have you ever contacted your pastor and said, Pastor, what can I pray for CEM? Or you already probably know what are the prayer requests without asking? Maybe you are too clever to me that you already know the prayer requests that we have for CEM without asking questions. Yes, if we are failing in some way, it's because we are not praying according to God's will. We're reading his commentaries about Matthew, said that about this chapter 6, especially in Matthew, is a chapter that will tell us about the, the kingdom's principle. And the first kingdom principle is the 
through worship. Through worship. And the Job chapter 6 talks about the righteousness of God because it's the main thing of the Sermon of the Mount. Remember, as I said last week, the main thing of the Sermon of the Mount is righteousness. And as we seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, then we must apply this principle into our life. And we have to apply this principle of righteousness in our relationship to God in worship. The relationship that we have to material things and our relationship that we have to other people. So the whole chapter 6 of Matthew talk about these three important things. Our relationship with God, our relationship with material things in this world, and our relationship with our brothers and sisters and the rest of the world. Very three important things in our life. As Christians, if we want to let the kingdom of God come, if we want to let his will be done on our life as it is in heaven. Why? We have to then learn the Lord's Prayer. Why we have to, to, to know well how to pray according to God's design, according to God's, God's word. I'm not saying that the Lord's Prayer is like Catholic says, we just repeat it. It's not that you have to recite the, post, the, 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 sorry, the, the Lord's Prayer. You don't need to recite the, the Lord's Prayer. You need to pray as the pattern, as the model of the Lord's Prayer, and design the Lord's Prayer was. We have praise, confession. We have also personal requests. We have also asking for help, for temptation, and we give the glory to God. We started with the kingdom of God, Praising God, and we finish praising God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So start with God and finish with God. Start with the kingdom of God and finish with the kingdom of God. So the Lord's prayer is about the kingdom of God. It's about the kingdom of heaven. And if we want to ask God, let your kingdom come, we have to pray according to the Lord's prayer. The details we're going to talk about in this series in the future weeks. But this is an answer of the request that the disciple of Jesus asked for, to the Lord when they were together. And as we, we don't find this question or this request in Matthew, we can find it in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, when the disciples get together with Jesus, and after he was praying, after Jesus finished praying, they say, they look at Jesus, he was praying. And he know, wow, our Lord's prayer. And our master pray, our teacher pray, our rabbi pray. Now, they say, one day, when Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. We want to pray like you. We want to pray like you pray. Because we see that you are not praying like the hypocrites. You are not praying like the Pharisees that they want to be known when they pray. You don't babbling when you pray. You know, showing up when you pray. You are not decorating words. You are not, you are not talking to God like he's far, far away or he needs to be reverent in every, in every word that we say to him. You are talking to God like you are talking to all of us. You are talking to God that you are talking to your father. We never heard such a prayer before. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus Say to them, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For you is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The disciples, they were astonished with this kind of prayer. Wow, we never address God like that. They never used the name of the, 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 the Lord because it was forbidden for the people of the Israel to take the name of the Lord in vain. But now Jesus said, when you pray, you should say like this, Our Father, who is in heaven, our Father. 
Pray to your father because it's my father. It's our father. And another important thing that you must know that Jesus don't, didn't say pray to your father, but he said pray to our father. Putting Jesus as our brother who not only wants to hear our prayer, but who wants to pray with us the same prayer. And Jesus wants to pray with you the same prayer. Now you must pray like Jesus prayed. So you can pray with Jesus. Many people, they think they are praying well. But they pray probably mechanically. They probably pray like a traditionally people pray. And this happened since the time of Jesus. He rebuked the Pharisees for being hypocrites in their prayer. For just showing up and praying in public. And he said, as we just read the scripture, when you pray, you should pray in your closet room. When nobody sees you. Instead of be praying in public. Jesus was not saying that we shouldn't pray in public and we shouldn't have a public prayer, but he was teaching us a very important principle about and the purpose of prayer. That we must pray in secret before we pray in public. As I hear from a pastor, long prayers in, pub in public are very short prayers in the secret. Long prayers in seekers are very short prayers in public. Because when you pray in public, you just already say everything in your secret, so you have nothing else to say. So your prayers are short, and people like those kind of prayers. <laughs> but those who never pray are long, when they have the opportunity to pray, they pray for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and even 30 minutes. I was amazed in our church when I went to the afternoon Korean service. There were a, a person who was addressed to the public prayer. And he prayed for 10 minutes. And the, you know the afternoon service in Korea, service in our church is just 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So he took the half of the time of the preacher to preach. So after the prayer, everybody was, all the pastors we were looking at and say, oh, no. The one who's going to preach doesn't have more, much time to pray, to preach because the guy who prays, he would say everything. And the, most imp and the most curious thing is that after this, probably was a deacon, pray, he just went out of the church. And that's made, that made me think a lot of things. Probably he was busy, he was maybe having an appointment. And the church just giving, putting his name, scheduled his name for the afternoon prayer. And so he just prepared his prayer, prayed, and went home or went to do his business. If I, in his case, I would say to the pastor or the ones who added my name, can you put me to another schedule because I have an appointment that very day? And pray sincerely for the service that I'm going to participate Instead to just pray and say, okay, bless those people who are going to listen to the pastor's sermon. Pray for those who are going to uh, receive the word of God and bless them in Jesus' name. So I'm going to do my business and I just bless the rest of the congregation with my prayer. Is this Christianity? You will judge by yourself. I have my own judgments. But this is what Jesus was saying. When you pray... Go first to your upper room and pray to your father in the secret. And then you come out and pray in public. Don't be like hypocrites, but just bubbling. Don't, don't be like the Gentiles say. The pagans, because the pagans were the Gentiles, were the, 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 the other religious people. You know that Romans were living together in those days. So when Jesus was referring to the pagans, he was not referring to the Jews. He was referring to those who worshipped all the idols, all the gods. So he said, don't pray like the pagans that they babble into their gods. They decorate prayers. And they just want to impress people in the public prayers. With a long speech. No. We shouldn't pray like that, Jesus said. 
God knows you pray before you ask. Then why we should pray? We should pray because it first reaffirms our spirituality, our trust in God. We also let God remind His promise to us and give us also a sign of expectation of the answers of our prayer. Because if we don't pray and we think that God is going to give us everything for granted, then we don't know when God gives us something or not. And probably you don't give the glory to God because you think that everything that you get is from your strength, your wisdom, your capacity, your ability, rather than from the blessing of God. Because you never pray and you never ask to God. We must pray sincerely. We must pray in God's will. Let you will be done on earth as it is in heaven, says the Lord. We must pray having a forgiving spirit towards others. Forgive our sins as we forgive our debtors, says the Lord. So we pray. And we must pray according to the teaching of the Lord. The teaching of the Sermon on the Mount. Then we can see the kingdom of God coming to earth. We can see God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the Lord's Prayer. And that's our title for this campaign. How dare, Pastor, you forgot to put the Lord's Prayer in your curriculum this year, 2016. God forgive me for being so foolish. But as I always say in Latin America, better later, later than never. So I'm here with a new series. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I need your help. And I need your prayers. But when I say I need your prayers, as I say, it shouldn't be just mechanical. It shouldn't be just taken for granted. Because sometimes people say like this. And let me ask you this question. How are you? What is your first answer? How are you today? Very basic English for elementary. Come on, you don't know the answer. How are you today? Everybody say. Come oh, on, you did ah, it's English lesson one. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? So let's do it together. How are you today? Yes. And this is the same answer when we ask people for prayer. Oh, I have this problem, Pastor. I have this issue. I will pray for you. The very, Pastor, you know, there, there's a problem. Do you think that you have a time? I will pray for you. 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 And many times when I just hear, here, or sometimes I say myself these words. We don't mean it. We don't really mean it. And I learned it from a pastor when, when I was studying about counseling and I was studying about the uh, ministry of the church. He said, when somebody asked me for prayer in a text message, in an email, I reply, I will pray for you, or I pray for you, but I don't put the, that in my agenda or my book of prayers, but immediately I pray in that very moment as soon as I just read the request. Why? Because in my busy life, I can forgive it. In my busy life, I can postpone it. In my busy life, I can never pray for that person, for that request. So I immediately pray in silence, even though it's just two or three seconds. But I pray. Because I don't just want to answer to someone, Pastor, pray for me. And I say, yes, I will pray for you, brothers. I will pray for you, sister. And just go in my way. And never have a time to pray. So if you don't pray together, and if you don't pray in that moment, don't say, I will pray for you. <laughs> if you don't really mean it. Because we are 
all tempted to not pray. We are all struggling with many sins that we easily forget. We easily postpone sins. And that's what the devil plan. That he wants to postpone sins. He wants to put all the sins in our schedule and let other sins be their priority in our life as, instead of prayer. Instead of praying for others. So, I want to have a time to pray together. I want to have time to pray with you, not just for you. And I want you to have a time to pray, not for me, but to pray with me. Because we are praying together. And that's God's will. And we must pray together. As Jesus also wanted to pray together with his disciples. But this is not easy. This is a spiritual warfare. The Apostle Paul teaches plainly about this in Ephesians chapter 6. And he says that in verse 18 and 19, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, he's talking to Apostle Paul, who is a preacher, who is an evangelist, who is a missionary, that never, whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will firstly make known the mystery of the gospel. Sometimes I evaluate myself, I evaluate my ministry and say, God, I'm a failure. I just see people running away from me. Probably I had too many complexes in my life since I, I was born. Probably I had too, too open, too transparent to tell my, 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 my weak points in my life to everybody. Like I, I trust everybody. I have no secrets with people. I'm very frank. I, do, I don't know how to lie. I don't know how to be hypocrite. And probably that's my mistake. Because I see many pastors, they don't do that. They keep their life very secret. Their, very, their life very compact. It's, it's hard to know what kind of person they are. But I'm a very open person. I talk about my wife. I talk about my children. I talk about my, my, my mistakes. I talk about everything. I see that people, instead to put their trust in me, they <laughs> run away from me. I say, this is a person with trouble. I cannot put my life on him. But I'm so grateful that you trust me and you, you are still with me as you pastor and, and, and teacher. But when I see other churches' websites and I hear their sermons, especially here in Korea, because you can go to many websites about the church's English service in Korea, and I hear their sermons, sometimes I say, my sermons are better than that. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but really, I mean, I say, there's nothing in that sermon, but I hear that these churches are growing. I churches that people are going more, more, more to these churches, and then there are more than hundreds, 200, 300, 600 in Korea. I'm talking about Korean ministry. I'm not talking about America. I'm not talking about Korean ministry. I'm talking about English ministry in Korea. Because I'm asking why we are not growing, why we have still empty spots here. Why CM is, is not successful? Maybe because I'm not American. Maybe I'm not native speaker. Maybe because I, 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 I have a problem of personality. I, I ask God for an answer, and I don't have this answer. But I, yesterday, probably got the answer, and God told me, because you are not praying as you should pray. But God, I pray. You know I pray. I say, no, 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 no. You are not praying as you should pray. And you know, are asking to people to pray as I teach you, and I teach in my word to pray. Then, Lord, where we should learn about prayer? You have the topic there. What are you preaching these days? The Sermon on the Mount? Then what is you want? Is that what you want me to preach? But that's for kids. No, it's not for kids. That's for every child of God. Then, I'm here with the opening of this series, The Lord's Prayer. Please pray for me that when I open my mouth, words may be given to me. And when words come from my mouth to you, you can receive grace and you can receive 
God's blessing and promise and you can meet God through this sermon, through this meeting. I think that all these ministries in Korea, they are now successes because there are people praying for that ministry. There are people praying for those pastors. There are pre people praying, even those these pastors, they have very bad sermons. Just, they are comedians. I mean, they are entertaining people. They don't even open the Bibles. They don't go from verse to verse. They don't teach nothing. Just culture. But they are successful pastors. Why is the key of success? I'm sure it's prayer. I'm sure there are many people praying for that service. There are many people praying for that pastor. There are many people who are praying for those listeners. Those are, who are able to receive. Because that's why we prepare the ground. Before we spread out the seed of the word of God. So the seed of the word of God won't fall into a solid ground. Won't fall into a path. Won't fall into a ground full of storms and worries. But we fall, fall into a good ground. Good soil, when they will bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 per one. What is the difference? Prayer. Prayer is the difference. We have a spiritual warfare against the devil, against the enemy of the kingdom of God. Second Corinthians 10, 45 says, The weapons we fight with are, with are now the weapons of the war. On contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captivity, every thought, to make it obedient to Christ. The devil will give you excuse to not pray together. We'll give you excuse to not pray immediately. They will give you excuse to not pray for some kind of prayer requests. That's your spiritual warfare. And you should pray alone for that in your secret place. But as soon as you finish prayer, you have to put your life in obedience to God. Because if you, after praying, keep the same mind, keep the same position against God's will, against what happening in your church, in your ministry, in the relationship that you have with your pastor, then you ha are forming a stronghold, a, 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 a barrier to let God's kingdom be fulfilled and standing in our ministry. Yes, everybody are have a struggle in life. And I hope that you this week, as you have a long week of holidays, you can have a time of prayer. There's no excuse. Don't tell me that you are busy this week. <laughs> Even if you are driving to visit your relatives and friends, or you are in the subway or in the bus, pray right there. Pray, listen to a music song, a gospel song, and pray in the spirit. Because we need to pray together. We need to pray for our soul. Even the Lord Jesus, he have his own struggle. And he went to the very place when he prayed his last, the Gethsemane prayer. And he said this word, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. May your will be done. No mine. May your will be done. Jesus teaches how to pray. Teaches the Lord's prayer. And teaches also the Gethsemane prayer. C.S. Lewis will say, the, for most of us, the prayer in Gethsemane is the only model removing mountains can weigh. What Lewis was saying that, yes, we have the model of prayer in Gethsemane. And even here, we can learn how to pray. Yes. Father, it is not possible to let this cup be taken away from me, but not my will, but yours, Lord. That's what the Lord Jesus said in the beginning. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's why Lewis prayed in this way, as he was quoted. I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I am helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me and all time. 
walking, waking, and sleeping, it doesn't change God. It changed me. As Rick Warren say, you pray for your change, not for God to change his plans. You pray that God's plans will be filled in you. Know that you plans will fill it in God. Jesus had the struggle in Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, can you pray for me? Can you pray with me? And these disciples, they couldn't pray even one hour. They just fell asleep. Humbly here, I asking you, my church, my friends and brothers and sisters, can you pray for me? Can you pray with me? Let's pray together the Lord's prayer. Let's pray together with Jesus. Let's pray together as Jesus prayed.